Bonsoir tout le monde. I want to give you an update on the situation in BC. As you know, uh, the folks in British Columbia are going through extremely difficult times right now, and the federal government is working with the provincial government and uh, everyone on the ground to uh, help them as best we can. I asked Minister Blair to convene uh, an incident response, response group meeting yesterday. He convened another one to, again today. Uh, and they gave an, uh, the ministers gave an update a little earlier today uh, to Canadians this afternoon. Uh, first of all, we approved BC's request for help yesterday. The support is moving right now, and we will do more uh, to help people directly. The Canadian Armed Forces on the ground have been helping out. They've already rescued over 300 people. Um, helicopters out of Kamloops and Esquimalt have been uh, deployed. Last night, uh, there were reconnaissance teams uh, assessing the situation. By the end of today, we had 120 soldiers on the ground in Abbotsford uh, with 350 personnel uh, staged in Edmonton ready to deploy as needed. We will continue to work with Indigenous communities to keep people safe. We'll work with the province, with industry and all other partners uh, to on logistics, on repairs, on getting goods moving. Nous savons à quel point c'est une situation difficile pour les gens en Colombie-Britannique, mais je peux vous assurer que le gouvernement fédéral euh, reste sur l'enjeu. On est là pour donner toute l'aide nécessaire euh, aussi longtemps que ça durera. Euh, on est en train de se mobiliser euh, aux côtés de la province. This trip to DC has been extremely effective. Uh, during the bilateral meetings I had with the American administration and the North American Leaders Summit, uh, we've really seen that our partnerships uh, are strong and unwavering. On est toujours prêt à continuer à travailler ensemble sur des enjeux importants pour nos citoyens. D'abord, uh, sur la COVID, our first priority remains putting this pandemic behind us, ensuring we continue to roll out vaccines uh, including getting as many of our populations vaccinated as possible, uh, moving forward on vaccines uh, for children, moving forward on booster shots for those who need it. Uh, we're going to be continuing to coordinate and work together with our North American partners to ensure that we are not only uh, ending this pandemic here in North America, uh, but also doing our part to end it all around the world. Nous avons des liens étroits entre nos trois pays qui nous permettent de faire face à de grands défis ensemble. Pour rebâtir en mieux, il faut apprendre des leçons de cette pandémie et se concentrer sur les gens vulnérables et comment on va relancer nos économies pour une forte croissance économique. Obviously, uh, the, you know, uh, the uh, uh, CUSMA uh, free trade deal, the new NAFTA that we signed uh, just a couple of years ago, uh, is a strong pillar of support for trade in our economies and continues to create opportunities for our citizens. We talked about the need for resilient, sustainable supply chains, particularly coming out of this pandemic, and support for small businesses as well. I did have an opportunity to directly raise concerns uh, about the proposed electric vehicle tax credit, uh, as well as discussing the Buy America uh, initiatives and concerns around uh, the Line 5 situation. But we have to remember that people are at the heart of our economy. To remain competitive, workers and businesses need the right conditions to thrive. We have to be there to invest in them, to give them the opportunities to grow. Part of that is recognizing uh, that we have to face climate change. We have to be strong leaders on the environment. And we have an opportunity to become global leaders in clean solutions. We also can move forward on strong labour protections and standards and we'll always be there to reinforce and strengthen our democracies as we uh, encourage and stand strong for democracies abroad as well. Le monde est plein de défis et de changements ces jours-ci en sortant de la pandémie, en regardant tout ce qui se passe un peu partout. Et nous avons une force et une résilience entre leaders nord-américains Trois leaders progressistes au Mexique, aux États-Unis et au Canada qui sont axés sur le bien-être des gens, tous les investissements qu'on doit faire ensemble et tout l'apprentissage qu'on fait en sortant de cette pandémie pour bâtir un monde meilleur pour tous. We're going to keep doing the work. We're going to keep delivering for our citizens and building a better future. Merci tout le monde. Thank you, Prime Minister. Merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. On va maintenant prendre 25 minutes de questions pour take 25 minutes of questions. 
Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Mélanie Marquis de la presse. Vous disiez que vous avez soulevé l'enjeu du crédit d'impôt pour des véhicules d'évolution. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous avez dit à M. Biden et que vous a-t-il répondu dans le tour? Euh, ça fait plusieurs mois maintenant qu'on souligne euh, l'enjeu qui nous préoccupe par rapport au crédit euh, pour les véhicules électriques qui seraient seulement faits aux États-Unis. Euh, on a souligné à quel point ce serait un grand problème pour euh, la production d'auto au Canada. Euh, on a très clairement souligné notre position. Les Américains, euh, au fil des conversations qu'on a eues, pas seulement depuis des mois, mais euh, particulièrement ces, ces deux derniers jours, nous ont entendu très, très clairement et on va continuer de travailler sur cet enjeu. Um, we've been highlighting our concern around the proposed electric vehicle credit uh, for vehicle, electric vehicles uh, uniquely made in the United States and the impact it would have on Canadian jobs and the Canadian auto industry at a time where we are investing significantly uh, in uh, the kinds of uh, zero emission vehicles that the world is going to need in the coming years. Um, I highlighted over the course of these past two days in many, many different conversations Canada's real concerns uh, about the impact it would have not just on the industry in Canada but on uh, the integrated uh, industry and workers on both sides of the border. And we're going to continue to do the work necessary to not just highlight our position but find solutions. Mais tout d'abord, comme on a vu euh, à bien des moments euh, au cours des dernières années, euh, c'est de, de créer des, des, des barrières additionnelles entre euh, le commerce et le travail que nous faisons ensemble dans l'industrie automobile ou autre, euh, c'est pas juste difficile pour les Canadiens, pour les travailleurs canadiens, ça finit par être difficile pour les travailleurs américains et pour l'intégration de notre économie nord-américaine. Alors, nous allons continuer de souligner nos préoccupations là-dedans. Nous allons continuer de travailler avec les Américains pendant que euh, eux euh, entament les différents processus euh, législatif euh, qui entoure ce, cette proposition-là et on, est, euh, on, on va continuer d'être là comme les gens savent qu'on fera toujours pour défendre les intérêts des Canadiens. Good evening, Prime Minister. Steve Scheer, Reuters. Um, NAFTA originally came about in part to uh, integrate the North American economy, uh, economies to compete with the European Union. Um, today, we heard uh, the Mexican president talk about greater integration of North America to compete with China. And I was wondering what your thoughts were on what he said and whether you agree with the, that point of view. I think regardless of, uh, of what counter forces are out there, Uh, it is obvious that working together to be more competitive in North America is extremely important, particularly at a time when we're seeing uh, some of the challenges faced by supply chains that stretch out across the globe. Uh, there is a desire coming out of this pandemic to look at more resilience, uh, more trusted partners, uh, more ability to be self-sufficient, and that can happen uh, not just uh, one within one given country, but within one region, and that uh, impetus for us to continue to work together and look at how we can even deepen our supply chain cooperations from everything from critical minerals in Canada to uh, manufacturing to, uh, to uh, greater partnerships on services as well. These are the kinds of things that create resilience uh, within North America that are very interesting for us all. You said you got to discuss some of the irritants, um, let's say, for Canada, Line 5, Buy American and uh, EV tax credits. Um, would you say you're disappointed that you don't have solutions? I think we all understand that in a relationship as big and as deep and as uh, all-encompassing for so many of us as uh, the relationship between Canada and the United States, there are always uh, going to be challenges coming up. And as we solve some, new ones will arise. And what is most important is that we have strong direct lines of communication and that we engage with them Uh, in constructive ways. And that's exactly what we've done. As we've consistently stood up for Canadian jobs, for Canadian workers, for Canadian industries, it significantly helps that the current integration and the overlaps within our supply chains and the fact that we work so well together already uh, means that it's difficult to find things that are 
bad for Canada that aren't also in some ways difficult or bad for the United States. And that's, those are the conversations we continue to have. Monsieur le Premier ministre, Richard Attendresse de TVA, euh, dans le communiqué conjoint des trois leaders, vous faites il y a une référence au fait qu'on euh, est confronté à une crise de santé publique liée à la multiplication de la violence armée. Et il y a une, euh, il y a une référence au fait qu'on veut s'attaquer à, à la multiplication des armes avec une « comprehensive coordinated approach ». Qu'est-ce que concrètement ça veut vouloir dire pour… Pour les Canadiens et pour les Montréalais qui, ont, qui vivent cette crise-là très concrètement. Ça fait plusieurs années qu'on travaille, euh, qu'on s'assure que nos forces policières euh, travaillent ensemble euh, sur, euh, sur le crime transfrontalier, mais aussi euh, sur les préoccupations que nous avons tous avec les armes à feu. Évidemment, avec cette euh, tragédie la plus récente qu'on a vécue euh, dans mon comté à Montréal, euh, avec euh, le, jeune, euh, le jeune Thomas Trudel euh, qui est décédé, euh, nous, nous, nous réfléchissons tous à comment nous allons devoir en faire encore plus. C'est pour ça que nous allons euh, continuer de travailler avec euh, le gouvernement du Québec et les municipalités qui veulent bannir les armes à poing pour justement faire ça, en se souvenant aussi que euh, le gouvernement fédéral peut être là pour appuyer euh, la province dans euh, ses services policiers et le travail qu'ils sont en train de faire. Mais euh, pour plus d'informations sur euh, la coordination avec euh, les États-Unis sur euh, la sécurité Public. Je vais me tourner vers notre ministre de la Sécurité publique, Marco Medecino. Marco. Merci, Premier ministre. Tout d'abord, je veux exprimer mes condoléances à la famille Trudel. C'est une tragédie et c'est inacceptable. Aujourd'hui. Euh... Ah, excellent. Aujourd'hui, j'avais parlé avec mon homologue américain, le secrétaire Mayorkas, de ce problème-là, et nous avons établi un, un dévouement de continuer de, de collaboration pour faire les investissements dans les deux côtés de la frontière pour arrêter le problème de le trafic de les hommes au feu. C'est un problème, c'est un défi, mais, défi, mais on va continuer avec un, un esprit de collaboration. Merci. Expliquez-nous en quoi cette fois-ci de discuter, de négocier avec le président Biden, c'est-à-dire, par ben, rapport à ce que vous avez dit. Ben, euh, tout d'abord, euh, je pense que c'est assez évident que euh, nous sommes euh, alignés sur les valeurs de façon profonde, moi et le président Biden, que ce soit par rapport à la lutte contre les changements climatiques, que ce soit euh, d'être engagé de façon positive dans le monde pour défendre euh, la démocratie et les démocraties, euh, que ce soit au niveau euh, de la croissance pour la classe moyenne, euh, d'être là euh, pour les femmes, euh, les, les minorités. Euh, nous avons énormément d'atomes crochus et c'est toujours agréable de pouvoir d'emblée être aligné dans nos approches. Évidemment, il va toujours avoir des points de, de, de différents entre nos deux pays, mais euh, on a la capacité, justement, de bien travailler ensemble pour, pour les résoudre. Uh, David Aiken, Global News. Good evening, Prime Minister. Um, you may have heard that China has uh, apparently kidnapped one of its top tennis stars, a woman who had just accused a top member of the Chinese government of sexual assault. Uh, no one can find her. Um, and that reminded many Canadians that China kidnapped our citizens and still holds some. And then many Canadians might say, why would we fund any athlete to go to the Olympics? Why should we send any Canadian athletes to the Olympics to reward China for their awful behavior? I think, first of all, uh, the issue of uh, the two Canadians who were illegally and arbitrarily detained by China uh, came up a number of times in my conversations over the past couple of days, and I uh, thanked a number of members of Congress and, of course, the administration uh, for being uh, steadfast friends and uh, helping to resolve this situation where Canada was simply standing up for uh, a treaty that we'd signed with one of our oldest partners. Um, we're pleased that that uh, that was resolved. But of course, uh, over the past many months, we have uh, been having uh, conversations with uh, partners and allies around the world about the Beijing Olympics, about uh, what our approach should be. I can highlight, however, that uh, there are an awful lot of athletes uh, in Canada and around the world who have uh, been training and focused on this very, very much. And we're looking for a way to both uh, be able to uh, see them 
uh, show their capacities and uh, fulfill all the hard work that they've done for many years while uh, continuing to demonstrate our real concerns uh, with uh, the way the Chinese government has behaved. Many athletes, of course, can win world championships, et cetera, and do it in other four than the Olympic. Nonetheless, you were sitting beside Mr. Biden today when he was asked about this question, and he was said he would consider maybe a diplomatic boycott. So I wonder if there might be other measures where the Canadian government might say, right, our diplomats are not going to participate in the Beijing Olympics. Did you have a discussion with Mr. Biden about that, and might we expect a boycott of our diplomats? Uh like I said, we've been engaged with uh, like-minded partners around the world over the past uh, many months on this issue. We've, uh, we continue to have those discussions, and uh, as the games approach, I'm sure there will be uh, more information as, the exact, as to the exact posture uh, Canada and indeed the world uh, will take towards this issue. Hi, Prime Minister John Barry, CDC. Uh, on the electric vehicles, you're talking about wanting to find solutions to this issue in the United States. Can you talk about some of the solutions you're putting forward? What do you want to see the Americans do to finish this? Well First of all, as a reminder, there is very much still a legislative process underway uh, that has a number more steps. Uh, there are reconciliation and implementation uh, issues as well. Uh, these are conversations that we have been uh, busy having. I can certainly tell you uh, that the Americans are very aware of Canada's position on this and our concerns around it and, quite frankly, the threats it poses to over 50 years of integrated automaking in our two countries. Uh, that uh, was most recently reaffirmed through the, uh, through the uh, Canada-U.S.-Mexico Free Trade Agreement, uh, the new NAFTA. What are you looking for, though? Are you looking for Canada to be included in this uh, tax credit? I mean, what specifically do you want? I think there are a number of ways uh, to look at solving this, but the essence is to recognize that Canada <coughs> has been uh, making significant investments in uh, zero-emission vehicles, that we have a commitment uh, to uh, make sure that 50% of all zero uh, that 50% of all new vehicles sold in Canada uh, by 2030 are zero emission, and indeed 100% of new vehicles uh, in the United in Canada will be a zero emission by 2035. Uh, we are committed to doing it. We have uh, critical minerals like cobalt and lithium and nickel and others that are essential in the production of zero emission vehicles. Uh, we can and must continue to be uh, a strong player in the integrated North American uh, auto production and market. Uh, and that is the point that we made very clearly to uh, a number of uh, American interlocutors over the past couple of days. Adrian Morrow with the Globe and Mail. Prime Minister, Joe Biden shut you down today when you uh, basically said that he didn't want to talk about the EV thing until after it gets through Congress, you know, at a point when the legislation is already going to be, you know, sort of, sort of set. I mean, how disappointed are you, or how disappointed should Canadians be that, you know, you came down here with a pretty straightforward request, uh, you know, stop trying to violate this trade deal we signed with you, and the president basically said, don't want to talk about it. Actually, Adrian, he was talking to you when he said that. Uh, uh, when, when the journalist asked him if he was going to talk about that to them, he said, no, we're going to talk about it uh, in this conversation. And I had an opportunity, I had, I had an opportunity to chat with him exactly about this and express uh, my very real concerns about this. So um, you know, we, we will continue. Uh, to make representations to the Americans on how integrated our uh, vehicle market and vehicle production facilities are in uh, between Canada and the United States and have been for over 50 years, uh, and we will continue to. So what, what did Joe Biden tell you then? If he, if he said, okay, we are going to negotiate, we're not going to wait until the end of the legislative process, what was it that he told you then? Uh, we talked about how uh, we need to find solutions moving forward, uh, but those conversations will continue to be ongoing. Minister Catherine Watson with CBS News. Forgive me if any of this was covered in French. Um, I wanted to, I, I know we were kind of going over this question again and again, but I want to ask if President Biden expressed any willingness to budge at all on either the EV tax credits issue or on the line by pipeline. Well, we, we know uh, that the uh, bill going currently before Congress is extremely important to this administration. We uh, recognize that there's a lot in there that is extremely important and of uh, value to the American people. Uh, we highlighted a concern that we have specifically about uh, the electric vehicle tax credit uh, that doesn't, I think, recognize fully the level to which 
auto production uh, has been incredibly integrated in our uh, two countries over the past more than 50 years. It is possible for a given auto part to crisscross our border six or seven times before it finally rolls off the assembly line in a completed vehicle. Uh, and we know we're going to be able to work together on building electric vehicles that, uh, quite frankly, not just our citizens but the world needs. So we highlighted that we should be able to find a path forward uh, to continue uh, to build vehicles together because it's good for competitiveness, it's good for jobs on both sides of the border, uh, and it's good for fighting climate change for the future. Sure. And then, will Canada file a dispute under the USMCA, or I should say CUSMA, if the proposed electric vehicle tax incentive issue isn't resolved? As, as you know, there are still many steps to go through in, uh, in terms of this legislation, so we will uh, see how they unfold step by step. Euh, au contraire, nous savons que euh, nous, nous allons toujours devoir euh, travailler main dans la main avec d'autres pays pour euh, créer des opportunités pour nos, nos travailleurs. Euh, je comprends qu'on est dans une ère euh, présentement aux États-Unis où euh, il y a un sentiment de protectionnisme qui, euh, qui, qui court depuis plusieurs années, mais Comme on a euh, toujours pu, pu souligner depuis des décennies, l'intégration actuelle de nos deux économies, de nos euh, chaînes d'approvisionnement, euh, veut dire que euh, dès qu'il qu y a application de protectionnisme contre le Canada, ça fait mal à des travailleurs et des manufacturiers aux États-Unis en plus euh, qu'au Canada. Et on va continuer de démontrer que cette réalité d'intégration euh, no de nos économies veut dire que nous allons toujours mieux faire quand nous travaillons ensemble. Mmh. Une dernière question, traduire un peu tout ce que vous avez dit en anglais. Euh, sur les véhicules électriques, est-ce que vous avez obtenu une garantie, une promesse ou euh, un engagement de la part du président? Dans bien des conversations qu'on a eues hier et aujourd'hui avec différents euh, mem membres de l'administration, du Congrès, euh, on a souligné très clairement nos préoccupations que, évidemment, euh, cette approche qu'il qu qu propose ne serait pas juste mauvais pour le Canada, mais serait aussi mauvais pour les États-Unis, étant donné l'intégration actuelle des, et la compétitivité de la production euh, automobilière aux, 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 au Canada et aux États-Unis. Euh, nous allons continuer de travailler de façon euh, euh, engagée et positive pour pouvoir résoudre cette situation. Frédéric Arnoux de Radio-Canada. Monsieur le Premier ministre, vous avez rencontré aussi euh, Madame Pelosi et Monsieur Schumer. Est-ce que vous avez senti qu'ils étaient plus réceptifs aux préoccupations canadiennes que M. Biden sur l'enjeu, encore une fois, de, des voitures électriques? Évidemment, le Congrès est en train de débattre et, et possiblement de voter euh, euh, sur euh, ces mesures actuellement. Alors, je ne vais pas euh, présupposer ce qu'ils pensent ou ce qu'ils pourraient dire ou faire, mais je vais souligner qu'on a eu des conversations extrêmement positives et productives, euh, et ils sont très, très au courant euh, des préoccupations du Canada et de l'impact potentiel que ça aura sur les emplois et, euh, et la prospérité aux États-Unis aussi. Et finalement, sur les enjeux canadiens pendant ce, ce sommet, euh, vous aviez des attentes, des espoirs. Sur une échelle de 1 à 10, là, au niveau de votre satisfaction, vous en êtes où? <rire> ben, écoutez, je ne vais pas faire euh, votre job pour vous de, 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 de coter les, les rencontres. Ce que je peux dire, c'est que euh, on a réussi à s'entendre sur les grands enjeux, que ce soit les chaînes d'approvisionnement ou avoir un, un rapport d'ici 120 jours, que ce soit au niveau euh, de nos stratégies à l'international en, en Indo-Pacifique, par exemple, que ce soit euh, au niveau du travail que nous allons faire ensemble sur la science et la technologie, que ce soit sur les changements climatiques ou la COVID, euh, on a eu une occasion de se rassembler entre trois chefs progressistes en Amérique du Nord pour parler de nos préoccupations partagées et parler surtout de comment nous allons pouvoir mieux livrer pour nos citoyens. Ça a été une très, très bonne rencontre. Uh, 
three amigos summits, and I did note at the end of the communique when it came out that there will be another one held next year in Mexico. <coughs> Uh, what can you tell Canadians that you're coming home with, and did you make any progress on Line 5? We spent a lot of time on EVs, but did you get any assurances on Line 5? I think one of the things uh, that uh, probably really bugs Conservatives is to see that there are three strong progressive leaders in North America who've come together to talk about the things that really matter uh, to citizens, uh, whether it's uh, growing middle good middle class jobs through uh, strengthening our trade and cooperation on big issues, whether it's putting an end to this pandemic, which as the Conservatives know uh, passes through vaccinations, uh, whether it's uh, working to fight climate change, which is again something that Conservatives have dragged their heels on. Uh, these are things uh, that we have come together to achieve uh, and we're going to continue to work in the best interests of all Canadians uh, uh, as a government and work uh, in the interests of North Americans uh, as three governments. And on another subject related to slightly outside North America, I'm curious if the subject of Cuba came up. The Americans uh, earlier on were talking about seeking a, a, a different approach from Canada and Mexico on Cuba. Uh, Canada and Mexico have warmer relations with Cuba than the U.S. After uh, this weekend's protests were uh, effectively completely stifled by the regime. Was there any ask of the Americans uh, to you or President Lopez or to Orhan Canada has for many, many decades now uh, ha pursued uh, an independent policy, its, its own approach uh, to Cuba, which uh, does not align directly with the United States, but uh, does not turn a blind eye to uh, the real concerns we have around human rights uh, violations and concerns for the Cuban people. We will continue to engage in a uh, robust way and uh, seek better opportunities for the Cuban people uh, while uh, keeping consistent with the Canadian approach that has always been effective. All right, Mr. Uh, Nick Taylor Easy from Politico. Uh, obviously, the British Columbians right now are going through a horrible time. Do you have any plans before the return of Parliament mm -hmm. to visit British Columbia? I uh, will visit British Columbia when the time is right. Uh, obviously our priority right now uh, needs to be on getting all the immediate help and rescue uh, that people need, which is why we've been uh, you know, holding uh, incident response groups, we've been deploying uh, CAF members, our ministers have been working very, very closely uh, with their counterparts in the BC government and I've had uh, multiple conversations with my ministers, with uh, the Premier, with indeed a number of mayors uh, affected in the region. Uh, we will continue to stay on top of it and uh, every step of the way do everything necessary to help the people of BC who are going through an extremely difficult time right now. And on the border um, at the summit today, was there any discussion about lessons learned from the pandemic and how to maybe align more effectively in, in the case of a similar crisis. Absolutely. One of the concrete commitments that came out of this, uh, this, these, this bilateral visit uh, was a commitment certainly between Canada and the U.S. Uh, to renew a vision for uh, the border, uh, to look at how we can draw lessons from the pandemic, lessons from the past years, uh, to strengthen uh, our ability to continue continue to smoothly move goods and services while keeping people safe, while uh, respecting our values. These are the things that matter and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing that dialogue uh, unfold uh, as led by our Minister of Public Safety and others. Thank you. This is what concludes tonight's process. Merci beaucoup. Bonsoir tout le monde.